may you all be seated. Let's, let's give a resounding Pentecostal African clap of freedom into the world. Your Excellency, the wife of the executive governor of Akwaibu State. I don't know whether you know, you are not here because of this uh, program. Your coming tonight is a prophetic statement and a confirmation and affirmation. A born again child of God has invented an engine that can drive a car or an aircraft for 50 years. He came in last night to see me and they wouldn't allow him to see me. He saw me this morning and said of all your six sons, ask one of them to take over the patent of the engine. An engine that drives a car for 50 years will change our level. You know, I have wept over the years that God may banish poverty. I have spoken to your husband and told him he was sent by God to kick off industrialization in Nigeria. For that young man to come looking for me, and for me to choose among my six sons, you, you know already who win these uh, um, jackpots. I said to God, I don't want to start anything until you show a sign that you're behind this project. They didn't tell me you were coming until 6, 6.30 p.m. this evening. That means your coming is God confirming and affirming that he is in that business. In 1972, God asked me to introduce worship and instruments into the church. So I went to Japan and bought musical instruments, full set. It was branded demon possessed instruments across the board, including uh, Bible Church, Assemblies of God, Anglican. The first day we went with 52 choir team, a pastor got up and said, Omar has come to kill the church of God. I said to God, kill Omar or else you destroy your church. Why will he bring demon possessed instruments to your church? It was my turn to speak and I said to God, between two of us, whoever has come to destroy your plan for the church, let him die, but let him die this week that the watching world may know you killed that person, either me or him. And that weekend he died. In many churches, instruments were regarded as demon-possessed instruments. But it's on record. We led um, quite but being a first school gospel church conferees, 5,000 of them, to a worship session. We went from song to song. And 5,000 of them fell under the anointing and slept from that hour at 10 p.m. till 3 a.m. the next day. And they were mostly, they were healed beyond imagination. At the Lakoto Church of the Sinners of God, we raised song after song. And do you know that two cripples from Muslim families, who are those outside? Who are those holding a meeting outside? Are they agents of God or who? Do you know that they were all healed?
By 1976, I don't have to think of bombs in the market. I must be the first man to stop music production because I made more money than my head could take. When Volkswagen was selling for 2,500, through music, I was directing 5,000 a month. When Pijo was selling for 7,500, I was directing 5,000 a month. One day I said to my wife, my head cannot handle the money God is giving me. I want to smash our 10 track recording studio. I want to destroy our copying machines. I don't want to produce music again. I don't want to sell anything again. Let God supply my financial needs supernaturally. My wife said it was demonic attack. I told her I was a demon. I grabbed my hammer, smashed all those things to pieces. As I stand here, it's a puzzle how God supernaturally supplies my financial needs. I am building, we are building, I am God, we are building a polytechnic, a polytechnic of one billion. I asked these people not to give me one couple towards the project. If there is God, let him bring the money. And as I speak, I put in 740 million naira into the school project. You don't know what the songs you raised meant uh, to me. People, everybody claimed to be my son or my daughter. But Jesus said, if you see me, you have seen the Father. People who cannot sing claim to be my children. And I may say it's not true. For my daughter, you must know how to sing. So when you raised your song, it was an affirmation and a confirmation. Two things I want it to be known to you that it is God that brought your husband to where he is now. I have said it over and again. I have said it before. Now, the first time he walked into my office, I told those of them who are close to me that the next governor of Akwaibu State had just walked into my office. And they were asking me to name his name, and I said I will not, but it should be on record. We have suffered needlessly, we Africans. We have no business with poverty. Equatorial Guinea is the most fertile land under the sun. If you have been to Equatorial Guinea, you will cry to see the level of poverty in that country. Cameroon is the second most fertile land under the sun. But do you know they have signed out to France everything under the earth that is crude oil, gold, precious stones. And they have reduced the cost of alcohol. As a result, most of the men there are all drunkards. I was asking the Prime Minister, who is my friend, why many can remain the poor? I was shocked when he asked me, Ma, what is there to make us rich? You see, a blind man does not see the wealth around him. I'm sure you know Nigeria is stupendously rich. But we are number 132 poorest country of the world. The best copper in the world is found in Liberia. When you go to Liberia, you cry to see women whose hands are amputated. Whereas the people that possess the copper are living like kings in Liberia. We are fighting in Congo because Congo has the largest deposit of uranium. You can't build bombs without uranium. But the white man will buy guns for our brothers to kill one another while they pursue the uranium. I don't know whether you know that 40% of, of diamond processed through history was processed in Angola. 
But Angola is so poor that the president lives outside the country. I don't know whether you know that South Africa, through history, has produced 40%. Do what get, get the fan closer to them. Have produced 40% what? Ant. Don't worry, it's my friend. Forty percent of gold processed through history was processed and being processed in South Africa. When you go to South Africa and see where our brothers live, that is the black. You cry. It's like a jungle in Nigeria. And what breaks my heart is nobody feels this pain because we are lepers. A leper feels no pain. A leper feels no pain. See my beautiful wife, when I, when I complain to her, the level of poverty in Nigeria, she tell me, oh, we're doing well, we're doing well. We're doing well. You know, there are days I cry when I speak about this. I don't know whether you know that you, Sudan is so stupendously rich that Sudan can feed the whole of Africa. And yet poverty crawls along the streets. And the bills affect one another. We were in Omok. How many weeks ago? Three weeks ago, we were in Omok. Omok had 32 oil wells. But then somebody bought guns for them. And they were killing 23 people a day. On my arrival, I announced that anybody that will not surrender his gun to the police will die in three days' time. And there were panic and fear. They began to surrender their guns. But why they are killing one another in a mock? Somebody in Lagos is using the 30, 32 oil wells. And the person does not even know where a mock is. God uses one prophet to deliver a nation from their captivity. And without, I'm not saying to impress anybody, I've said it where I should not say it. I've said it on every available stage for me, that your husband did not come just to do business as usual, but to start something that will change the whole nation. When I first began to preach the baptism of the Holy Ghost, in quite a church caliber, I want to speak on that. A man walked up and grabbed the microphone from me and said, you will not speak on that in this church. We don't believe in it. As he was trying to commence preaching, the, the Holy Ghost came upon him and he began to speak in tongue. And the, as that was in the days of uh, Reverend Isaac Kumori. And they gave me the microphone and said, this man who has come to stop you is now doing what you say you do. Brave <laughs> man. A change is in the air. In our lifetime, Nigeria will join the rest of the civilized world. No, we can't continue like this. Does it make sense? Because God gave the white man seven holes as he gave us, ten fingers as he gave us, ten toes as he gave us, seven days in a week as he gave us, twelve months in a year. I screwed with them, I was able to beat them to second position, even though they started three years ahead of me. Moses did not even know what God was going to use him to do. But God had planned it before he was born. Of all those who was born at the time he was born, he was the only one who was not killed. Because God had a plan. I want to announce, we're not playing politics. They know I'm not, a, I'm not I am not, uh, politically informed. I don't even know what they do in politics. 
when I, I say, when I used to say to the former president, I don't know what people do in the name of politics. He would say, oh, my don't, reverend, don't say that. Don't say that you are our father. And I said, oh, stop, stop, stop. I believe an event are confirming an affirm that your husband is here as a kickoff point for what will happen across this nation. Before music became popular, I brought it into the church and people fought me. Before uh, Pentecostal anointing came into the church, I brought it, when I spoke for your church in Okanafon, four creepers walked in one day. They said I was a magician. I asked the elders of private church to pray the last day of the program and seven creepers walked instead of four. So I asked them, who is a magician, me or your elders? We're happy to have you and all these beautiful daughters. May God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Can somebody say all my problems? Sit down, let me sing and praise my God. Anybody? <laughs> yes, listen. Now today we have you. We're going to have you for a long time. Let us stand up and say to God. And you will take Jehovah. Amen, Moyo. Amen, Queen. And you will take Jehovah. Amen, Moyo. Amen, Queen. And you will take the member. Amen, Moyo. Amen, Queen. And you will take Jehovah. Amen, Moyo. Amen, Queen. And you will take the member.
person shout hallelujah you, you may be seated God bless you your excellency we are going to have miracle convention and we are going to bring the best of the best among preachers to demonstrate the power of God it shall be a competition among the preachers to showcase their anointing and their unction and it's likely uh, we're going to see people healed without prayer. No, in, in our mock, how many people were healed without prayer, Joe? No, those, you're yeah, talking about those wood fibroids shrink. I, I told them as I speak, fibroids will shrink without prayer. And every protruding stomach will shrink. And when we counted, we were 100 and what? 86. But those who were here were about 1,000 in one night. We are not a church because I was sent by God to build unity among the churches. We got back to Efak, an Anglican church. We turned the Presbyterian to the Pentecostal church. We, get, we produce the Express in Methodist Church. We've been sent by God to bring together the Pentecostals. So we were able to move from Uyo to, to fill National Stadium, Surulere, with a, with a voice choir of 5,000, with a prayer team of 23,000, and that's what gave birth to PFA. We were the first to fill National Stadium before my friend and brother took over. Our job is to cause the, the spark of revival to become a flame in all the churches. Every church is our church. We want to see revival everywhere. And God has honored us over the years. It's amazing. We have seen uh, the impossible happen. In Okibwe, I announced that 12 cripples would walk. Nobody clapped. But how many of them walked? 32 in one night. In um, Umahe, I announced that 13 cripples will walk the last day of the program in Ibeko High School. Sunday morning, people came to me and said, if I'm not sure the number will be 13 cripples that would walk, please don't come. We shall be coming with stones and bibles. If we don't see cripples walk to the tune of 13, we shall stone you. What they did not know is my type of ministry, there's a division of labor. Mine is to speak what God has asked me to say. God's job is to bring it to pass. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I want us to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1. We'll take verse 10, we'll take verse... 11. I want to show from the Bible that God has a plan to multiply you 1,000 times. God wants to do things that nobody had done before in your family, around you. God wants you to be the record tree of your family. 
God wants you to be the main woman of your family. I don't care how weak you are. I don't care how small you are. There's a plan to make you the main man of your family, the main woman of your family. God even wants to make you his ambassador, ambassador to your village. Because witches and wizards have turned our homes into a marketplace. But I want you to hear me from this night. You can hold a big program in your village and make every witch, every wizard jobless. And they lose their power. We have been sent to save the kingdom of God against the kingdom of darkness. Sons of native doctors in my village said I had driven away their gods. Therefore, they were going to kill my wife, myself, and my children, which was wonderful. I was happy. I wanted to see what God would do in heaven while they killed me here on earth. So the seven policemen federal government gives me every day, I sent them to a neighboring village. I didn't want them to use their guns and create trouble. On our way back, my chief driver saw a crowd of 500 people. I said, oh, we are dead. My friend, shut up your mouth. Who is talking about dying? I said to him, I belong to somebody. He will protect me and fight for me. I don't need to raise my finger to fight. He said, you know, I'm a young husband. Don't let me die here. Let us run away. Hey, don't, just drive on. We were about 50 feet from them when they turned and began to run away. They said they saw me with 1,000 soldiers. They said I was a wicked man. As they were running away from us, some lost their eyes. Some had dislocation. A prominent man from my village went to my wife and asked her, how do you feed 1,000 soldiers? She said she didn't know anything about soldiers, that she lived high alone. The elders asked them to go back and apologize to me. When they got to my gate, they ran back. They said they saw soldiers all over the, the yard. Our simple message, our single message is to showcase the ability and the availability and the limitless, boundless possibilities of our God. There is so much ignorance of God's ability in the East. I cry when I see the level of poverty and ignorance in the East. We are the gospel belt of Nigeria. If God has prospered the Jews, he must prosper us. They have invented cars without drivers. They have invented all manner of things. And God must position us where we can also invent things and do what people believe we cannot do. All those who are on my side shout hallelujah. Everyone here tonight is an agent of change. I have one request for everybody here. Stop thinking traditionally. Every traditional thinker limits himself. Let us step out of the map and do the impossible. About four days ago, my wife was asking me, where do you get the money you are using in building the second hospital and building a polytechnic at that cost? How do you get the money? And I said, my friend, you are my immediate neighbor. So you don't know how to get the money. With this God I preach, nothing is impossible. What did I say? Nothing. Can somebody say nothing? nothing. You say loud that nothing. nothing. Let's go to the book of this one, chapter 1, verse 10 and verse 11. The Lord your God had multiplied you. Wait, can somebody personalize that line and say to himself, God has multiplied me. 1,000 times. There are things you can do in your village, in your family, that will surprise everybody. When I told my elders in my village that I would cause the road to our state headquarters to be tied, 
They asked me, how would you do it? And I said, God said it can be done. I saw a young man, I said to him, sir, do you know you've been the next governor of my state? He said, I don't have interest in politics, I don't have money. Hey, Oga, I said you are the next governor. I'll pray for you. Soon, his lecturer became a minister of petroleum and gave him a shipload of crude oil. A poor man became rich the next week. When he became the governor, he ran to me and asked me, can I give you a contract? Contract to do what? People like me don't do contracts. If you're happy, tie this road, and instead of start work next week. And God said, the rest of the roads, I'll give you money to tie them with your own money. As I speak, there is a tiring project going on in that village. We serve an awesomely awesome God. We have allowed tradition to stop us from believing this God for the impossible. When God told me I would be in a hospital, I told my wife, good girl, she said, don't tell anybody else. It's not possible. She said, you have two bogus ideas. Why can't you think of simple things to do? And I said, I don't know why God would keep asking me to do bogus things. We were in Omaha, Nebraska for a program. And I saw two cripples on, the, on wheelchairs. And God said, oh my, I will build that hospital for you through those two girls. How? He said, speak health into them and leave the rest in my hand. The enemy keeps asking us, how, how, how will God do this? How will God do that? God has 250 million ways of solving one problem. I said to the senior pastor, those two girls shall walk home from, this was a Lutheran church. They don't believe in miracles. When I said it, <laughs> my friend, the senior pastor, he looked at me and said, Uma, are you well? I said, I'm well. What do you mean? He said, I don't know what they're talking about. I said, those two girls will walk home. When I said, Father, thou power of God, let your healing anointing come upon those girls. They fell off their wheelchairs. When they woke up and began to shout, we can walk, we can walk, you need to see what happened. People were jumping up, calling their relations, come, a black Jesus is in our church, come. The elders took me to the office and asked me, what can we do to help your ministry? And I said, God asked me to build a hospital. <laughs> the city is as good as done. This is a church of the rich. Half of the crowd you see here are industrialists who will pay for the hospital, will give you equipment, you use seven lorries to move. That's, and that's what they did. There was a time I used to give drugs to the government of Aquibon, government of Crescent State, government of Imo. Government of Biosa, Government of Rivers, Government of Abia. For almost five years, we used to give each government drugs worth 10 million. That, those drugs came from this, my friends. This, this God, he, he can use any destiny helper from any part of the world to help you realize your promise. Right where you are sitting tonight, there's this voice of God that says, the power to multiply is on you. Yeah. No, do me a favor. Don't say to two persons, the power to multiply you is already in motion. Let's go on, sir. The Lord God of your fathers make you a ten thousand times so many more as ye are. Wait, the, the Bible is saying where you are today, 
Whatever you are today, God is ready to multiply you 10,000 times. No, 1,000 1, times. What does that mean? It means so many things. God can multiply your ability to help those who are helpless. <laughs> I think it was last year. God said to me, you can give scholarship to 100 students. I'll make the money, 100 undergraduates. I'll make the money available to you, 25 million. Don't worry about it. And we announced it. And since we started, we, we have owed nobody. God can multiply your ability to wipe away tears in the eyes of others. God can use it to bring healing. Remember the day I came in here and said, I've been praying for those who have no child. And that one simple service, God healed how many people? 43. They got pregnant that month. Just simple, short prayer. Read on. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as you. Can you raise your hand and declare and prophesy and say, The Lord my God, my father, the God of my father shall make me one thousand times more than what I am today. of time I will not stretch this too long it is good to receive anointing and blessing from God but the most important thing is to develop your spirit but to anointed does not mean you can withstand every temptation let's rush to Judges chapter 16 we, we take 16 and 7 we take verse 10 and verse 16 and verse 17 that you are anointed is not enough. You must develop your spirit to withstand temptation when you are alone. Temptation in the absence of the crowd. Yes, sir. And Delilah said unto Samson, Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, Behold thou hast mocked me, yes. and hast told me lies. No, let, let's see verse 1. Then went Samson to get some and half of it, and went it unto her. It was through the Gezerites saying, Samson was seduced by a harlot. A harlot by her style of dressing should be a warning to every man. But when you have mortgaged your conscience, when your conscience is dead, you lose the ability to see beyond the scene and see beyond the obvious and see beyond the natural. You lose your discerning spirits. Yes, anybody could have seduced Samson. Why a harlot? Because a, a harlot wears a belt that says, I am already well worn. Many men have slept with me. Don't bother about me. But no, when you are blind spiritually, you cannot see the danger ahead of you. The greatest is to have what I call a conscience with a bell an amplified conscience that warns you to stay away from temptation. Go, go on to 16 and 17. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words. It, see, she did not just entice him. She pressurized him day after day. That shows she was a determined enemy. See, let's see verse 17. That he told her all his heart. And he, 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 it, was, it was now Samson joining his enemy's army to fight himself. I don't care who our enemies are, provided we have a healthy relationship with God. Can we now watch to 1 Samuel chapter 24? Let's take verse 10, verse 16, verse 17. David saw King Saul 
in a, in a powerless position. He could have killed him. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord had delivered thee to the, the Lord had delivered me into my hands, David said. In the cave. Yes. And some bade me kill thee. Some people asked me to kill you. On mine eyes spared and thee. Wait, 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 wait. A, a young man who killed my children and my cousins was sure when I asked him to go free. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. The same day, somebody robbed my office moved away my printing machines. I used to have a, an American manager in charge of a printing press. I said to the young man, for removing things from my office, uh, take them. It's a gift from me to you. There is power in forgiveness. And we have to learn it, we have to copy it, we have to practice it. I am still confused how nails passing through the hands of Jesus could not ask the Father to punish those people. Jesus said, Father, they know not what they do. Hey, oh God, they know what they are doing. They are not children, they are adults. No, he said they don't know the consequences of what they are doing, which is common with us. Because God does not judge immediately, many of us conclude he will not judge. David saw so where he could have killed him. Read, read verse, uh, verse 10. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord had delivered thee to bear into my hands. Into my hands, okay. yes. And some bid me kill thee. Some people bid me to kill you. my eyes spared thee. I spared you. And I said, I said, I cannot put forth my hand against, against the Lord's anointed. For he is the Lord's anointed. How many Nigerians can say that? The man who have been chasing after you. Remember the day I said to your husband, nobody is good enough to be his enemy. <laughs> when people threaten me, usually I will laugh. And my wife will ask me, why are you laughing? And I said, those who threatened me last year, where are they? I had a brother. My father had a large family. He was the only child of his parents, so were his, uh, his own parents. So he had married eight wives. Each one had her own kingdom. The most dangerous thing is to marry more than one wife. Long after you have gone, the battle continued to rage. This is my brother, my father's son, who said to me, if I don't kill you, I will rest. The titular, like the first son, you are number five. I will kill you. And I said to him, my brother, people like me don't die like ordinary men. Can you hold somebody's hand and say, I will not die like an ordinary person. Consulted 32 native doctors. One brilliant, intelligent native doctor said to him, I'll put juju in you. That juju will show you my power for six months. Then I'll bring out the juju and put it in Omar's body. He will die. My brother liked the back in. So he agreed. They put the juju in him. Six months after, the juju said he will not go anywhere except Omar commands him to go. That the only person he fears in that family is me. No, when God calls a man to follow him, that person will become an extraordinary person. The difference between that and extraordinary is extra. We are called by God not to live an ordinary life. One morning, my wife and I were, were on our way back to you. The elders of my family, the man's wife, came and begged me to speak to that demon to leave my brother alone. And I said to them, a man's enemy's enemy is his friend. If I want to kill you and somebody wants to kill me, that person is your friend. So if Juju wants to kill my brother who wants to kill me, that Juju is my good friend. Greeting when you go back. 
and he died that day. This God can fight for all of us. He said, leave vengeance unto me. Because life is designed in a way. Nobody can cheat you. Nobody can take what is yours and run away with it. God is the Lord of harvest and the law of harvest. In every business involving two persons, he is the third person. What has been taken from me shall be returned. It shall be returned. It shall be returned. It shall be returned. Raise your hand and shout hallelujah somebody. Last year we had family problem, we had problem over our land. My family has the largest expanse of land in my area. One faction said the land was their own. And they asked me to go to the nearest high court and announce that the land was their own. The judges would believe me. My mother called, they went to my mother and said, if your son does not go and declare us owners of the place, we shall kill him. We will take his name to meet Dr. Shun and he will die. Let one night my mother called me and said, I don't want you to die. First thing tomorrow morning, rush to any court of your choice. Announce that the land belongs to them. They are on their way to meet Dr. Shrine. Ma, if they take my name to meet Dr. Shrine and come out alive, I'll stop preaching. I'll burn my Bible. My mother asked me, is that how you will die? Ma, we're not talking about dying. We're talking about demonstrating the power of God. Let them take my name. And I want to announce this night, whoever had taken your name to a native doctor shrine, that shrine will go up in flames. I only pray and wish that you know the, the inerrancy of the word of God. So they took my name the next morning. On their way out, the leader died. Two days after, the native doctor died. So the story in my village is that Omar killed his enemies and the native doctors. Ben and Brethren, I like that name. Why? Any man that loves God and obeys God and serves God will be too dangerous for any enemy to handle. <laughs> no, with a beautiful smile on your lips, hold somebody's hand and say to him, oh, I am now too dangerous for any enemy to handle. I don't know whether you believe it. <laughs> we were in Isubu for a crusade. The God of Isubu asked me not to come. As they were sharing handbills, the hand, one handbill fell into the shrine, and their God ran away. The elders came to me and said, our God said he will not come back except to bring a dog, a dog, a ram, and a goat. And I asked them, the God who ran away and the one who did not run away, who will bring peace offering? Tell your God to bring me a dog, a dog, a ram, and a goat or else I'll cause more trouble for that stupid God you have. Uh, Joe, what did they say in, uh, where were we last few weeks in near Port Harcourt? Where? Little one. They said that God asked me not to come. And any preacher to come and pray, but not to my. And I said, announce to that little God that we are coming. Let the juju bring his power, we bring our own. Let power meet with power. The lesser power shall battle the greater power. I want you to hear me. You are not, you are, when you give your life to Christ, Jesus, the Bible says you enter into the kingdom of God and you become a demonstrator of the power of God. But you must also receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That makes you an extraordinary person. God can even bring you to a place where you can see tomorrow.
But let's take two, three more passages I'll give you. Let's see the book of Psalm, chapter 119, verse 11. Every one of us must learn how to hide the word of God in your heart. And let the word of God rule and rebuke and correct you. Yes, sir. Thy word have I hid in Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against that I might not sin against thee. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. Where the Bible says, obey your husband, obey him. Where the Bible says, love your wife, love her. Love her not because she's good. Love her because God has commanded you to love her. She may be a woman who can, who can say 5,000 words a minute. Love her. She may be a disaster in the kitchen. Do you know not every woman can cook? I have a relation who just cannot cook. She's, she, she's almost a professor, but cooking counts her out. Every time she says, uh, uh, Reverend, I'm preparing food for you, I ask her to damage her, her cooker. <laughs> Most of the time, God will not bless a woman with an intelligent man. Or whoever he gives you, obey him. The Bible says, obey him in all things. Why? Uh, submission produces protection. When you submit to your husband, he's going to protect you and love you. Men yield to humility. You bring out a lion from a man's life if you're arrogant. And as, as a wife, don't insist on winning arguments. As a husband even, don't insist on winning arguments. Some days allow your wife to win arguments. It will reduce the tension in your marriage. We are called to obey this God. Jeremiah said, I, I saw the world and I ate it. And it was good in my body. We must eat the word of God. Let us be ruled by the word of God, not by what people do to us. That's where God will fight for us. But let's hear the book of Jude chapter, I mean Jude 20. There's another simple way of strengthening your spirit. What does he say? But ye beloved, ye beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. All of us must learn how to speak in tongue, pray in tongue. Why? Let's see 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. There is power in speaking in tongue. It edifies you and strengthens you and prepares you for the battle of life. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Speaking in tongue, the Bible says, edifies you. You see, Samson was a great man. The, he was the champion of Israel, but they became a clown because of one woman. The, the frightening thing is Satan wants to know your price. If a, a smashingly, gorgeously mesmerized, any beautiful woman can seduce you, he will employ her to seduce you. But if your spirit is strong, that seduction will not work. Let's see the book of Genesis 39, which is verse 7. And it came to pass after it came to pass. Days, yes. that his master's wife cast his her eyes His master's wife Joseph. cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, and she said lie, with me. lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, yes. Behold, my master Behold. said not what is with me in the house. Yes. And he had committed all that he had to my hand. Yes. There is none greater in this house than I. Yes. Neither had he kept back anything from me for yes. this. Because thou art his wife. Because thou art his How wife. How then can I do How this, then can I do this wickedness against who? God. Men and brethren, it's not easy to resist temptation. Every time God gives you a dream, he'll introduce either a man or a woman to confuse you, to hoodwink you, to lapoon you, to drag you into the mud. And let nobody say he's too big to be tested. No, sir. Satan does not care how old you are. 
does not care how anointed you are. Samson of all people began to grind corn for his enemies. And they plucked out his eyes. This night I want you to know that God has a plan to multiply you 1,000 times. This night I want you to know that by speaking in tongue, you edify yourself, you strengthen yourself. This night I want you to know that spiritual development is the best thing you need. Let God strengthen you. For no school graduates any man without being tested. All those who want God to strengthen them, you want God to strengthen you. That in your hour of temptation, you may be like Joseph. Can you stand up before God? And open your mouth and talk to God as you feel led. Stop writing. Get up. We're about to close. My God, my Father, why I stray? Far from my home, a light was way. Oh, teach me from my heart to say, Thy will be done. Everybody, please, I want to hear warfare prayer. Let God know you are desperate. Let God know you, are, you mean business. Let God know you want to be strong in your hour of temptation.
in Jesus' name. Father, you know our hearts. You see what no man can see. You see when no man can see. There must be a reason why you brought this highlight. Asking us to strengthen our spirit. A man can be anointed and not have a strong spirit. A man can be blessed and not have a strong spirit to resist temptation. And such a man will not end strong. And so Samuel said to Israel, I have saved you over this many years. Have I sinned against any one of you? And they said, no. Solomon could not say that. For his difficult read, a man whose heart was torn away by strange women. Samson could not say that, for he became a slave to his enemies. Absalom could not say that, for he even defiled himself with his father's concubines. Father, we ask you, in the silence of our hearts, show us our weakness. Show us how to stay away from temptation that will defeat us. Help us to have, Father, what I call in intentional obedience to you. Let us so arrange our lives that our enemies will not see us unprepared. For everyone who is part of our service, let the spark of revival in his or her heart become a flame. Let each one of us know you personally and intimately and spiritually and empirically and livingly and as a living reality. Let us know you. For those who know you shall do exploits. Amen. Father, we have accepted not to live an ordinary life. We want to live an extraordinary life. Let our lives demand explanation to people. Amen. Let our enemies know you are with us. Let our friends know you are with us. But most importantly, let our enemies know we love you. When they get close to us, may they know we love you. Amen. Father, may they know we love you. Amen. And I were prepared to save you at every level of responsibility. For your daughter and members of our team who have come to fellowship with us, May your blessings rest upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. This dispensation of government is in place to wipe away our tears. Amen. Therefore, let no man born of a woman stop this movement. Amen. Let no man, woman born of another woman stop us from realizing this dream. Amen. Father, we are tired of being poor. We are tired of struggling. We are tired of being rejected by the watching world. Because you are our God and our Father. Because you have blessed the Jews. Father, we insist you must bless us as you bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, increase our creativity, our imagination, our wisdom. As you have done for the Jews. We pray for the government of Akwaibom, beginning tonight. Let there be a multiplication of all that we are using them to do. Use them to wipe away our tears. Use them to bring us to our Canaan. Use them to bring us to a place of industrialization. Father, as long as we continue to farm with holes, we shall continue to live with poverty. But you have a covenant with us that we shall not walk through life empty-handed. Let the miracle start. Therefore, bless Her Excellency, 
her husband, members of the government with good health. Bless them with imagination. Bless them with creativity. Open doors for them. Father, bring information to them. And the members of the inner city are appointed by you. And as you serve Her Excellency, His Excellency, may you also serve them and meet them at the point of their needs. Thank you for hearing us. The purpose for which this program was put together, let it be realized. We shall go home tonight knowing that the power of multiplication is waiting to be expressed in our lives. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a resounding clap of faith. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I don't know why you are clapping like you're not happy. I don't know whether you know most developed countries of the world became developed because of Christians in those countries. I was in South Korea when they were as hopelessly and wretchedly and stupidly poor as we are. But as, as, as we speak now, they ship cars to Europe. Dubai, I went to Dubai when Dubai was not as developed as she is now. Even though at that time I was, I was mesmerized, I called her, I cried all night. I asked God, why can't you bless us with the same creativity you gave these people in Dubai? When I went to Qatar, I couldn't sleep. They are so organized that the local telephone calls are free. The taxi running locally free. Every citizen has government giving home. I wept. I cried. And if Israel is doing this work because they are, their father is Abraham, I will not rest. I don't know about you. Until God who bless us, I said, bless them. You know, in, in Nigeria, we are used to poverty. We are used to struggling. We are used to failure. In fact, what breaks my heart is we call ordinary ultimate. We call failure success. But this night, I want to announce, we shall not continue. No, 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 no. God did not bring her excellency in response to the choir's invitation, God brought her to confirm and affirm that this great God has remembered us. Yeah. No, you didn't hear me. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening around us, I have had discussion with her husband over and again, and I feel excited that in my lifetime, a revolution can start, a change can start. And men and brethren, People like me, I will, not, I will not die until I see these things happen. I, I see it already coming. Except God wants to punish uh, His Excellency, Emmanuel Rudom, He couldn't have brought him out from the banking hall where there is security and safety and honor and dignity to uh, this rough ground you call uh, political ground. If you look at him, he's not caught for sword politics. But I know that God has sent him as a handkerchief to wipe away our tears. No, I have led so many revolutions, so many revivals. I brought the revival. I was the first man to bring instruments to churches in the East. I was the first man to preach the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I was not the first man, the second man to preach prosperity. There was a time in the entire Christian family in Nigeria, only one person had a car. One person had a car in 1972. 
And every girl wanted to marry him because they had a car. But I did say then that a day will come that cars will be packed outside Pentecostal churches. And if you go out now, here, here, you will not believe the things you see. I speak to you because I have the ability to see tomorrow. And I want to announce our day, a day we shall resurrect our buried dreams. Those days are already coming. Yeah. And that for every buried dream in your life shall resurrect, shall resurrect, shall resurrect, shall resurrect, shall resurrect. Shall resurrect. Raise your hand and shout hallelujah somebody. Can you now raise your hand? I, I was going to give her Lindsay a chance to say something. She doesn't want to reach the protocol of the church. So we'll just say the grace. Our chairman will come and lead us to say the grace. We have a covenant with God that no member of this fellowship shall go about without mobility. Since we began to pray that prayer, we have had more than 3,000 cars given to us. And no member shall be homeless. Every member shall have his or her own home. Amen. And every member shall have means of mobility. Amen. And as I speak, your own is on its way to your garage. Amen. Father, thank you for this evidence of your faithfulness. For those who have no car, let their own miracles start. Those who have no house of their own, let the miracle start. Amen. Everyone who is part of our service tonight, grant Moha 1,000 blessings. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just